Hi, it's Lucy here and today I'm hoping to help with two issues that um, you might have. One is mail card designs, so I've got a nice easy card design today to show. And the other thing is tearing papers. Now, I'm going to show you just a couple of tips and I know that a lot of people are a little bit nervous about tearing their beautiful papers. So I do recommend starting with papers that you don't absolutely love so that if it goes wrong, you know, you're not going to be upset with me. <laughs> so here, I'm just tearing, I'm just trying to show that if you tear it right on the edge, you don't have a lot of room to play with and you need to be a lot more careful. Whereas if you tear it more in the center of the page or if it's a larger piece of paper, it's a lot easier because you can hold it nicely on both sides. Keep in mind only one half will have that white torn edge and it'll be the one that's uh, when you rip, it's the one behind, the one that you're pulling away from you. Uh, rather than the one that's pulling towards you. There's no mistakes with tearing paper anyway, I've found, because if you don't like it, you can just tear it again. You can tear little bits off. You could actually use it as a decoupage type background paper if you really make, you know, huge mistakes with it and can't seem to fix it. But I've not tried that yet and I think I might in the future on a video. So what I'm doing here is I found these three papers from this Kaiser Craft pack and I chose another uh, wood paper as well and I couldn't decide between the two so I thought that I would use both but I accidentally forgot um, to use the other one and I've used this one twice. So now I'm just trying to decide how to pop this, these two pieces on and whether I wanted them on an angle, which was my original thoughts. But because of the patterns on both of them, the anchors and the arrows, I felt like they look better if they were straight up and down. I add the double-sided tape to the bottom of the card and then I place the paper on top of it. And... That way then I can either use my double-sided tape or glue to stick down the top half of it and I don't need to make sure that everything's correct before um, popping it down that way. So I'll do that with the top half as well. I'll put the double-sided tape on the top half. I'll make sure that the this pattern paper covers it and then just glue down the rest of the paper and then I can cut around it and there's no measuring there's no worrying about um, I wouldn't want you guys to think that you have to do it exactly the same way as me you just um, tear away and as long as the paper is larger than your card uh, in width you're good to go you can just create your own they don't have to be equal amounts of paper you'll see with these two cards one of them the dark paper I end up using um, a lot more of on one card than the other um, and it's fine and so now I'm just uh, deciding I was going to do it exactly the same way as the other one and then I changed my mind and decided that I would have them all overlapping each other instead of having that one piece uh, underneath and the other two over the top of that. So what I'm doing here is I'm just popping down the first piece and then I'll put some scrap paper down the bottom as well. Uh, that's just to make sure that all of the card is basically even or at least fairly even with the top part to the bottom part. So I'll add the middle section now, but I'd like to cut around the top first because I don't know how much is there and how much is overlapping until I've actually cut it off of that um, top piece of paper. So once I've done that, then I can get a better idea of where I'm going to pop this next piece of paper because I do want them to be... Um, 
oh, not not even, but I do like to make sure that you can see enough of each paper really. So now I'll just add some double sided tape to this last piece. And I know by putting uh, the double sided tape on the bottom of that, that I'm going to be wasting some because now I'm going to be cutting around it. But at least I know that um, at the bottom of the card, it's all taped down really, really well. So as you can see here, they're similar but different. So I've with this Kaiser Craft um, pack, which a lot of their paper pads do come with um, some of these ephemera at the back. This one, this paper pad, by the way, is called Sandy Toes and it's quite old. You may have it in your stash as well, but I thought I might try to use up some of my papers i do like to use different ones on all my videos most of the time yeah what i'm doing here is i've just found a few of the items at the back of the paper pad that i'll use um and i've just torn up some of the scrap paper that was left over as well i think that'll look nice because there's so much blue at the bottom of that bottom card so I've cut that circle as well and it just worked out really well because it says something on one part of it, surf and sand, and the other part is a uh, surfboard. So that can go upside down and it looks fine. So that worked out really well. You can do this with lots of ephemera pieces, cut them in half and use them on two different cards. So I'm inking around these paper pieces and that part there was um, the corner kept coming up and I actually quite liked that look so I encouraged it and gave it a little bit more of a rounded feel to it and then I've torn the sentiment here that I've just printed up on the computer and I'm just going to tear around it ink around it and scruffy it up a little bit too so that it doesn't look too neat and nice on this card or it won't match. I'm using vintage photo and antique linen distress oxide inks with some brushes here. So I'll place all of those down by using foam tape and sometimes to give the different heights I'll add um, some just scrap paper behind some pieces, foam tape behind others so that yeah it all comes together nicely and it doesn't all look one layered. So that I've used um, double sided tape and I've inked around all of the items as well. So this one I'll use a little bit of both so I've got double sided tape on one side and then just a little bit of paper on the other. Um, when I say the paper and it's scrap paper, I don't mean printer paper. It, it is a little thicker, about 200 GSM. Um, I'm not sure what that is in pounds, but you know, it's a, it's a lot thicker. It's more of a craft paper. So I'm just going to add that little um, scrap piece as well. I think it looks really nice just to add a little bit more color down there as well. And then I've added the star too. And so now onto this next one and I'll do it fairly similar as well. So I'll add some double sided tape to that semicircle. And then I'm just going to rush you through this card a little bit because it's fairly similar. I'm inking around the items, but I'm also going to use that uh, light timber pattern paper um, behind these as a border as well as the inking. And so I'll ink them up as well just to give them that extra warmth for this card too. And um, I'll put some foam tape and extra papers on the on the backs so that they have um, different variations in layers and stand out more that way which looks really nice and then I'll ink another sentiment around 
and I'll pop that in the center as well. This one says, sorry, I missed your birthday. I'm going to just go around it with pen because I just wanted it to stand out a little bit more than it does otherwise. So this just gives it that something extra. And while I'm at it, I just doodle around the semicircle as well. And also with the words to just to make them stand out a little bit more as well. And then these cards are done and I have a little treat of, I went through my stash of cards that I still have that are using torn paper designs. Um, just to give you some more ideas on how you can go about this once you, you're feeling confident to start ripping into your papers. So these ones have got little peekaboos, um, which is just very easy. You cut it like this or tear it like that. I use a little clean lollipop stick, but you can use any sort of circular item um, or just your fingers um, to roll it otherwise. And then put it on, put something else that's contrasting underneath it and it looks lovely. And here's another one that I've done that's very simple design. And this one's a little bit more intricate. I've done quite a few tears together and then separated them to layer them. That one's just a tear diagonally as well. And this is another design where I've just straight up and down. This one's quite a lot of detail and the sides are very straight but I've torn the top and bottom of the papers and that one I've shown these ones in one of my first ever videos on tearing it was one of my first videos full stop just to give you some ideas on on different things that you can do this one I've torn in the across the center as well um, and I've used a banner die at the bottom of this card to create something a little bit different. And these papers worked really well for tearing, so I made a few using it like that. This one, I actually tore the polka dot after I die cut it, um, that paper. I, I tore the bottom half and put the checkered one underneath it. And then this is the last one, which is a bit more masculine again. So I hope you've enjoyed this and got some ideas. I love reading all the comments. Please like it. Please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.